There's an unfortunate stereotype when it comes to owners of the Honda Civic Coupe. Hey bro, this here, this has a turbo and VTEC. It's like a V turbo and it's all earth creamy and shit. That CVT, I mad double clutch it. Wicked sick. But despite this unfortunate typecast, people of all ages have been buying the Honda Civic Coupe for decades because it's a practical, economical, fun to drive compact. And for 2016, it's now a survivor. There's hardly any competitors left for the Civic Coupe, but that hasn't stopped Honda, as this year there's an all new one. Love it or leave it, the styling that debuted in the new Civic Sedan is here in the coupe as well. But like happens with most two-door vehicles, it looks a lot better in coupe form, and I really like what Honda's done with the rear end of this car. Under the shiny sheet metal resides the same mechanics as found in the sedan. That means a standard 2.0-liter four-cylinder making 158 horsepower, while there is an optional 1.5-liter turbo with 174 horsepower. Now only the base coupe can be had with a six-speed manual, while every other trim needs a CVT. Now before you furiously begin typing in the comment box below about how you'll never buy a Honda Civic Coupe because it has a CVT, BAM! What's this? A manual transmission hooked up to the turbocharged engine? Why yes, yes it is. Now this is just a prototype, but the sedan, coupe and hatchback will get a manual turbo option sometime in the future. Alright, I hear ya. Enough about specs, Mike, tell us how it drives. So on to that. The new Civic Coupe is actually a little lighter than the old model and it does differ from the sedan by offering grippier tires, lighter weight wheels and stiffer dampenings in the suspension. As I found in the sedan, the 1.5 turbo really motivates the coupe well. It takes a little while to build power but once it's there it really rockets away faster than most other compacts. The CVT gets the most out of the engine's power but it kind of sucks out some of the fun but like I said earlier a manual is on the way. And despite the turbocharged Civic's power, it still is rated to get 31 miles per gallon in the city and 41 on the highway. Now of course, if you're trying to audition to replace Ryan Gosling in the next edition of Drive, you won't get that kind of mileage. Steering feel in the coupe I find to be a little bit better than I found in the sedan, and that has to do with the grippier tires and less unsprung weight. Handling as well I find a bit better in the coupe, and again that has a lot to do with the grippier tires and the stiffer suspension. And while we're speaking of suspension, ride comfort in the Civic Coupe is actually quite good. The new coupe has a roofline that's about an inch lower than that of the sedan, and overall the car is about 5 inches shorter. In fact, the 2016 coupe is about an inch shorter than the 2015 model. Despite that, rear legroom is way up in the 2016 coupe compared to last year, and the trunk has also grown a bit. I don't know what kind of witchcraft is going on here, but it's working. There's nothing new inside the coupe as far as the interior goes compared to the sedan, and that's a good thing, as the interior is already a well-executed quality design. The front seats offer good support, and after an hour behind the wheel, I was still comfortable. And if your commute is an absolute nightmare, the new coupe can be had with an adaptive cruise control system that will keep you at a pre-selected distance from the car in front of you in stop and go traffic. And if you don't have a touring model like this car, it still comes with brake hold that will automatically hold your brakes during soul-sucking rush hour traffic. The 2016 Civic Sedan has already won the Autoguide.com Car of the Year award, and the coupe isn't just as good, but it's actually a little more fun to drive, and it doesn't even have the manual for the turbo yet. But seriously, Honda, when are we getting the SI and the Type R? I was supposed to say. <laughs> I'm coming back. <laughs>